command control communications. That this is what the whole purpose of the constructive simulation is, is to build a picture up of what's going on. Virtual simulation has an absolute necessary part in the way the British Army trains. Without virtual training, we lose an ability to experiment and try different things, uh, which we just can't do in the field because of the damage to the real estate, the cost of live training. Right at the bottom end is our generic vehicle simulator. What we're trying to achieve inside the simulator is, um, is a visual um, immersion as well as an acoustic immersion. So the sound of the vehicle is also replicated through speakers, um, but that will also give battlefield sounds as well so they'll know if they're being contacted, i.e. shot at by the enemy. Um, so they've got an understanding of what's going on around them because if it was just quiet, it would be very difficult to get a feel for the immersion of the, uh, of the training. The gold-plated solution in terms of our um, simulators here in CAT are our vehicle-specific simulators. Uh, those are modelled to a very high level of fidelity. It is akin to being in, this, in the real vehicle. Uh, and once you've been in there uh, for about five to ten minutes, you almost forget that you're inside a simulator as opposed to your real vehicle. When we have a full battle group in, um, we would expect to be using nearly all the 154 boxes in here. So this is the Challenger 2 Vehicle Specific Simulator. Uh, and as I said earlier, what we're trying to do with the Vehicle Specific Simulator is ensure that when the crew step inside that box, it feels uh, just like being in the real vehicle. Challenger 2 was brought into service in the 1990s, uh, where Playstations and such like games consoles were just starting to hit the market. Uh, and soldiers that were coming through were very familiar with that sort of control handle um, for use of gaming systems at home. So in a, in a moment of inspiration, the, the Challenger 2 control handle is modelled um, on a games console control handle in that, so it has two control handles uh, to hold onto, that doesn't, it doesn't, that's fixed inside the vehicle. To move the turret around, he has a thumb controller to move left, right and up and down. Uh, changing of magnification, day or thermal imagery. Then on the back side of the, um, of the controller is the switch to make him take control of the system and his firing switch on the left hand side. Now in terms of the positions, the, the gunner and the um, commander go inside the main box, but what we have down here on the side is the driver's compartment. Same for the commander and the gunner uh, inside the main fighting compartment of the tank. Every single one of the views that they've got, again, is produced by a computer screen attached to a periscope on the outside of the box. They say it is like a game, and yes, when we initially start training, they do start to get a bit gung-ho, and they like to be able to just uh, get the, the sort of, let's throw a few rounds out uh, and, and kill one another as well, and there's no real consequences to that. But the thing is, is once they get beyond that, they actually do start to learn. I think it it's tends to be more nerves um, than, than wanting to go gung-ho, to be honest. But again, that, this sort of training helps a lot with that because it gets it out of the system. In the essence of se uh, serious gaming, it's probably very, very close. Um, some of the large simulators that you can, the large simulators you can get commercially uh, in the world of VBS2 uh, and some of the other systems that are out there, it, it's very close. What it isn't is Call of Duty. Um, we have a 100k by 100k um, piece of real estate to exercise on uh, and that enables us to real freedom of manoeuvre which you don't get in a gaming environment which is very much channeled and corridored uh, and scripted in order to allow the game to progress in whichever direction it wants to. Um, so virtual simulation absolutely has its part to play. What it doesn't do is replace live training. Um, what it does do is enable a battle group to get to a very competent point where it knows its drills, a firm foundation, the doctrine that it needs to execute in order to make absolute most out of that live training opportunity it gets.